welcome and congratulations. Um, my name is Seung Kyung Chae and I am an assistant professor at the College of Information Studies, also known as the iSchool. I'm also an affiliated CS, um, well, assistant professor at the CS department. And um, this is my third year at UMD, but first time um, at the orientation. So I didn't know what to expect. So I prepared just two things. First, I want to talk about my research area, what human-computer interaction is um, at a higher level. But then also I'll talk a bit more um, detail about my research. So my area of research is human-computer interaction. And the goal of human-computer inter interaction is not just to make technology work, but to provide a great user experience for people. So the emphasis is on the people. Human-computer interaction is a multidisciplinary field of study that spans across multiple fields, including computer science, cognitive science, design and art, and also social and organizational psychology. So we use different methods from these different fields to understand um, the kind of challenges that people have when they are interacting with the current existing technologies and what are the workarounds that they use to overcome some of the challenges and use those insights to improve the technology and iterate on the technology. And also we evaluate those technologies that we build in different ways, either in the lab setting or in the field, meaning we deploy the technologies that we build and then evaluate how people actually use um, this technology. Um, if you don't have a good grasp on human-computer interaction, we might end up with um, this tragic design. So if you put yourself into the shoes of the user and then think for a bit, like two seconds, uh, we realize that what's wrong with this current design, right? The toilet paper is too far from the toilet seat. Um, and how did we end up with this kind of design? This is an existing design. Um, I assume that there were some technical difficulties or some constraints. Um, but one thing that's clear from here is that this is not a user-centered design. This is something else. So when we are um, teaching human-computer interaction, we teach our students how to, uh, how not to design something like this, but how to understand users and users um, in the context. So there are different kinds of design methods that we can use to understand the context of use so that we can design and build usable and useful systems um, to provide amazing um, user experience. Here's another example of uh, tragic design. So here, um, <laughs> the direction of the elevator um, is uh, mapped to the, one of those buttons, but it's unclear which one is mapped to which um, button. Um, so every time people interact with this kind of system, the control, then they're confused. And this is like, people have to do a lot of try and error to understand the mapping, and we want to avoid this kind of design. So now a bit more about um, my research area. So the goal of my research is to empower people with their personal data. So I, I am deeply interested in um, different kinds of personal data, um, and I think about how to help people better collect their personal data and then understand personal data. So what do I mean by personal data? Well, there are some obvious ones, like how much we walk, how much we exercise and sleep, but there are other kinds of um, concepts that I'm interested in, such as um, productivity. And it's really fuzzy concept. So if you think about your own productivity, how, how do you want to conceptualize it? And what kind of personal data do we need to collect to um, conceptualize and define this notion of productivity. So that's um, just one example. And I design and build data collection tools to better collect personal data 
and then represent and visualize the personal data so that people um, can leverage the personal data. And I do that through designing visualizations and feedback. And my work is in the context of improving people's health and well-being. So um, recently, I've been designing systems to support personalized tracking experience. Um, different people have different kinds of tracking needs with different level of motivation. Um, but existing systems do not provide a level of flexibility um, that um, so that it makes it very hard for people to collect what's meaningful for themselves. So for example, people who have diabetes, their tracking needs are very different from people who have eating disorder, but um, there are um, not that many systems that provide a level of flexibilities that these people need, which makes it very hard to collect meaningful data for these individuals. So uh, with my student now, a postdoc at UMD, we've been building semi-automated tracking systems um, called OmniTrack, which helps people construct their own data collection tools, um, combining both manual and automated ways uh, of tracking data. So consider, um, imagine you are designing a tracking tool without programming, but as if you're um, building a Lego block. Um, to create a tracking tool that you can use for your own unique um, tracking needs. And going forward, we are um, extending OmniTrack to help researchers who do not have um, develop, development resources, but who have the need to collect in situ data for their own research. So those are um, researchers at public health, researchers at psychology, so now they can take this tool to create a data collection tool and then deploy to their um, participants and users and patients so that they can collect the data that they need. I'm also working with machine learning researchers to use this personal data to create personalized models. So in situ data is very expensive and hard to collect in the wild, especially um, with marginalized user groups such as older adults. So I am designing data collection tools for um, these marginal user groups so that they can easily contribute activity labels as part of self-tracking. But then machine learning researchers can use these labels to train the model to, to create more personalized system. So the feedback can be more accurate when these marginalized user groups are interacting with the system. So this work um, I am currently doing with Hernisa Kakuri and Amanda Lazar, and both are assistant professors at DI school. I'm also building tools for health behavior change. So one on the left side, um, this is the work that I'm doing with my colleague at UMS Amherst. And we are using this finger-worn wearable sensors to collect very fine-grained limb, upper limb uh, movement data. And this is for stroke patients so that we can track their limb uses and then use that data to build um, personalized rehab um, therapy so that uh, we can engage stroke survivors in rehabilitation in the home. The one on the right side is the work that I'm doing with my PhD student. And we are designing um, personalized food tracking tools for people with different food tracking needs. Um, to personalize food trackers, we need to know how to personalize and how to configure. So in, in learning the tracking needs, we are um, employing this method called the co-design workshop uh, with dietitians so that uh, we can learn how we should configure and personalize these trackers uh, for people with diabetes or people with eating disorder or something else. This is my last slide. If you're interested in um, this kind of topic, I am offering a course this semester called the Personal Health Informatics and Visualization. It's on Tuesdays. And the topics that I will cover will include things like personalized medicine, DIY do-it-yourself health, self-tracking, and how to design and build um, technologies for behavior change. So um, if you're interested, I'll meet you uh, next Tuesday. Thank you.